This is the best computer that you can buy on earth for five specific reasons and it completes Steve Jobs plan on having a powerful small computer that is silent and can do anything that you want it to. Now we have been testing and using this for just over a month and it is a way better computer than the previous Mac Studio. I'm not talking about a little upgrade, it is a big big improvement. When Apple released the original Mac Studio with the studio display last year, people were intrigued but also a little bit confused because we were waiting for a new Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And just a year later, they updated this but at the same time released a new Mac Pro, which really is redundant and unnecessary for 99.9% .9 of people. Now that computer was powerful but we had major issues, especially especially with the M1 Ultra version where the performance just did not scale properly and it made that $4,000 one and especially the $5,800 spec just not make any sense. And then when they released the new Mac mini, people kind of flocked to that as a cheaper, great option with excellent CPU performance beating the Mac Studio. But now with this thing, even the $2,000 spec, it literally replaces all other Macs for the desktop. Now we made videos about the M2 chip being a stopgap chip, basically an overclocked version of the M1. Now that is technically true. And we thought that the M2 Max and M2 Ultra and this also won't be that great. But what blew my mind is where the M2 Max was beating out the M1 Ultra. For $2,000, you get a computer that nobody else can match, especially in the form factor and how cool and silent it runs. Now sure, you can make a custom PC, you can build it yourself, but by the time you buy all the components and you buy CPUs that match up with this performance, which yes, they are out there, and graphics, it still just does not compare with the complete package running Mac OS that just screams with pretty much anything that you throw at it. We finally have Wi-Fi 6E, which is not only incredibly fast with new routers, but even even with older routers having much better range and performance, we also have the updated HDMI that could support 8K60 and 4K 240 frames per second. You have an SD card with USB type C's that are fast on the front. You get the best in the world web browsing and web application performance, and you get a media engine that destroys even the most expensive RTX graphics cards, both both in regular codecs and ProRes support, both decoder and encoder, that nothing else can even touch. I spoke about the $2,000 afterburner card I bought for my $15,000 Mac Pro, and even the M2 Max costing the same as just that card absolutely annihilates it. Now what really shocked me is when I compare the M2 Ultra in the Mac Studio to the new Mac Pro, which I purchased thinking that that's the computer we're gonna keep for a long time for our main video editing computer. And there, we saw pretty much no differences and even as far as cooling, where the three massive fans on the Mac Pro that I thought would do way better, well, they were basically the same or even slightly worse than this Mac Studio's cooling solution. I threw everything I could, the toughest test, and it performed so well that the Mac Pro just did not make sense. And then I compared it to my Intel Mac Pro that cost so much money and it absolutely embarrassed it and pretty much every single way, especially in the tougher tests. And to be honest, the computer that I thought we would not be keeping is the one that we ended up getting. And the M2 Ultra this year does make sense, especially if you're somebody that pushes the system in terms of graphics performance, uh, for example, in Blender, or in terms of video editing, it is just so fast, even in hardcore raw tests that don't use the media encoders. Because of this, for most people, even Windows users, they can pick up one of these already pre-made and it will outperform a ton of the competition 
and even custom built PCs in most categories. Now there are still some limitations and some issues with the M2 Max and M2 Ultra Max Studios. First off, if you're somebody that does 3D work, well, in a Blender or other applications, because there is no hardware ray tracing, well, it will not do as well in those tasks. But for almost everything else, including coding, even with After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, photo editing, in the real world, it will outperform similar price PCs even if the benchmarks don't perfectly align um, in those synthetic kinds of tests. Now, I think my biggest issue with this generation is the fact that Apple has limited the SSD speed on the base model, where the speed is pretty much half of what it was last year. And I think this sucks on computers that are this expensive at $2,000, but on the positive side, for 200 bucks more, you can jump up to one terabyte, and then the speed is back. And I think at a $2,000, price point, it's not as painful as on, for example, an M2 MacBook Air, where that jump is a much higher percentage of um, the actual you know, purchase price, the, the amount of money that you are spending. It's crazy to think that after so many failures from Apple trying to make a small, compact, powerful computer like that G4 Cube, and then the trash can that just flat out would not work out, they created a product that they were not marketing as a powerful computer um, like the 2013 Mac Pro, but it turns out to be exactly what they wanted to do for so many years. Ultimate insane performance while being cool and silent. Um, and what really impressed me also is the fact that the M2 Max and M2 Ultra, even having way more performance than the last generation, the power usage is also very, very low, sometimes actually less. Now, which one would I recommend for most people? Well, if you don't need ultimate graphics performance, I think that for 2000 bucks, the amount of performance that you get is going to destroy much more expensive Macs that you bought in the past. And for most people, it is more than powerful enough. Even for us, the M2 Ultra for most cases is overkill and we're not gonna maximize the performance that it has for our uses but at four grand compared to eight or 15,000 on a Mac Pro, it just is such a great value that for most businesses, you can still afford to buy one of these and to use them. Now, I think that there's a chance that in the future, Apple might just discontinue the Mac Pro because like the video we made a while ago, this is the new Mac Pro and so many people that were waiting for the Apple Silicon transition to be finished, well, they ended up just buying a Mac Studio anyways. And I'm so happy that the rumors of Apple canceling this product did not come out to be true uh, because it is really fantastic. And that's just based off of a chip upgrade and going into the future with three nanometer chips, this will get even better. So after using this for over a month, testing it out, I would highly recommend it to pretty much everybody. Skip the M2 Pro uh, Mac Mini, skip the Mac Pro, pick up one of these and you're gonna be incredibly happy. And if you've been on the Windows side and you're thinking about upgrading, get one of these from Apple. They have the best return policy. Uh, go in the store and they'll tell you the same thing. Try it out. If you don't like it, you can send it back. But I think you're gonna absolutely love it and it will be the best computer that you've bought in a very, very long time. So here at Max Tech, we would highly recommend this new Max Studio. Uh, Max Studio, Max Studio. <laughs> if you have any questions, any specific configurations, you guys can ask down in the comment section below and check out one of those great comparisons right over there. Click the circle above to subscribe. This has been Max and we'll see you in the next one.